All right, gang, here we go. This is for physics unit 10, part five. We're talking about generators, motors, and mutual inductance. All right, so in the previous video, we talked about Faraday's law. We talked about how we can use a magnetic field to induce a current in something else, right? And uh, so then we could also know that anything that's got a current flowing through it also has a magnetic field right and so um, and because it's a current it's a moving charge and now that we've talked about how we can um, we've, we've also talked about the right hand slap rule right where the magnetic field or moving charges in a magnetic field can cause a force to occur all right and so now what we're going to do is going to take those three ideas in the next couple of parts here is we're going to take all of those ideas there of this general relationship between electric and magnetic fields and moving particles uh, charges specifically and be able to uh, put those things to work for us all right so first we're going to talk about generators generators specifically electrical generators are things that take that take mechanical energy okay they take our mechanical energy uh, energy and turn it into electrical energy for us all right all right so they turn mechanical energy into electrical energy so the first thing that you really need for uh, any sort of generator is you need something to turn a wire for us all right and so let's take a look here at this link here real quick So here we've got just the general setup for what uh, like a generator, a basic electrical generator would look like for us. Here we've got a magnet, either North Pole, South Pole, it doesn't really matter. Generally, this, we're going to pretend the one on the right is always the North Pole, just to make it easier. And notice that we've got just a crank on this, and this will allow us to turn it. Now, in real life, uh, you wouldn't really want somebody to just sit there and turn it and turn it and turn it and turn it and turn it. That would suck. Uh, but what we could do is we could hook that up to something that will turn it for us. So it's pretty easy to imagine a windmill. You know, if you attach this to a windmill, a windmill would turn, and then the, that in turn would turn this wire as it goes through. So you need a permanent magnet, okay? And then you need this coil of wire, all right? And, and it can be multiple coils or one coil. There's some pluses and minuses to doing it different ways. All right, and then we also need these guys here that are attached to the spinning action here called slip rings. All right, these little guys here are called slip rings, these two different rings. Uh, notice how one of them is attached to one side and the other one's attached to the opposite side of your coil. Right, so that wire comes in here and attaches there. And this side of your coil comes in here and attaches there. And then both of them are attached to different ends of whatever it is you're collecting your circuit with. Here we're just using it right away for a light bulb, but you could use this to charge up a battery or something like that anyway, uh, whatever you want to do. Um, this here is a little voltmeter here. It's going to tell us whether or not we're producing a voltage. All right, and we can see that it's you know uh, what the value is here. All right, um, <clears throat> so here's the different parts. Oh, the another part we need is this brushes right here. So where the slip ring spins, there are these brushes that collect the charges, and so it allows this thing to move around without actually moving the the wires here, and so it lets this electricity flow. All right, so we'll turn our thing here, and we can see that as this turns through this magnetic field, it makes the light bulb light up, and it makes our voltages go back and forth. Okay, now if you look closely at this, you'll see that when our motor is up and down, straight up and down, all right, our voltage is at zero. So now, 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 now. Now. And then when it's horizontal, it's either at the negative or at the positive. Let's watch it one more time. So now, 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 now. Pretty wild, right? All right. Um, so let's look at these pictures to help us get an idea of what's going on here. So they will, I forgot. <clears throat> Didn't have my pen up. All right. So if we look at this, this is, uh, this is you know, our where we're starting here. The, our magnet field, our blue lines are our magnetic field, and the red lines are the movement or the velocity lines of our thing, and then this pink line is showing us where we're turning. All right, so we're starting here on A, and we go from left to right, and then down left or right okay like that and so that's the that's kind of what we're doing here now notice here that as we go these magnetic field lines 
okay, and the velocity line. So let's only look at A. Let's pretend C doesn't exist for a second and just look at the velocity of A. Now remember our right hand slap rule says that uh, we put our thumb in the direction with the velocity and our fingers in direction with the magnetic field. So you can imagine that if you're going to try to line those up, put your thumb and your magnetic field together, uh, you can't make that work. And so we wouldn't, it doesn't follow. And in order for the slap rule to work, you have to have a right angle between the two. And those are completely parallel with one another, the A, uh, the velocity red arrow here, and the magnetic field blue arrows here. Um, and so because they're completely different, or they're, they're completely parallel with each other, we wouldn't have a force provided at all. So notice that there's absolutely no potential difference being applied across our wires here, and uh, there's no EMF being induced, so it's at zero. In the next part here, though, we've, uh, we're turning our wheel, and now we're completely perpendicular to it, and we can try this again. So if we look at this red arrow right here, this red arrow is pointing downwards, and our uh, and our magnetic field is pointing up and to the left. So we could do this with our, our guy here, and we can see uh, that we get that right angle that we're after between those two. And now that we have that right angle, we can talk about, well, what's the force on those electrons? Well, remember, if they're electrons, the electrons are coming out of the back of your hand. The force on an electron is coming out of the back of your hand. So the electrons are going to be pushed uh, this way down the wire okay um, and so because they get pushed that way down the wire they get dragged down this way up here and then the completing the circuit go the opposite way right and if we did the same idea with C uh, our velocity would be like this right thumb up like this and then fingers with the magnetic field like this and we could see uh, that the force would be coming out the back of our hand and so they'd be going up like this right and so we get this double force shoving us around and we get this induced EMF all right, uh, and then here once again, now that we're parallel, notice that we're completely upside down from where we were. It's at A, we're completely upside down, and so we can kind of do the same thing. It's a parallel again, so there's absolutely no force. So notice that we're back at zero induced EMF, and then uh, last one here, we're completely perpendicular. Or uh, perpendicular again and so at a we can do our you know our right hand rule the velocities up and this guy's this way all right um, and so you know we could say well we're our velocity is going to be this way and then C is going to be this way but this is completely opposite of the way it was before right before a was going towards the EMF and B was going away from the EMF now our a is going away from the, uh, the, the EMF and our B is going towards it and so these arrows notice these arrows down here are flipped from what they were up here and notice that it results in us having a negative EMF so in this setup we have with these slip rings we get an alternating current where it alternates between positive and negative and positive and negative positive and negative all right <clears throat> and so we call this an alternating current okay and it's the current that changes direction at regular intervals and we saw that when we looked at that last video that gif or uh, we saw that it went back and forth Right, between positive and negative at regular intervals. All right, now uh, direct current is, or alternating current is probably the most common, um, or definitely the most commonly used alternating current. All the electricity that comes in your house is alternating current, but like the uh, like batteries specifically are direct current. Direct current does not change, uh, change between positive and negative. It doesn't change direction. It's always going in the same direction, okay? And so in order to make a generator make, or an electric Electrical generator make direct current like what we've been looking at what we need to do is uh, use this new idea called a commutator all right so here's our alternating current generator that just that we looked at remember we've got our uh, magnets north and south pole they're opposite from what we did before but that's okay we've got our slip rings right and so when these spin we end up making uh, a current that looks like something like this, right? This is essentially what we just looked at. It starts at zero when it's up and down, and it goes positive back to zero, and negative up to zero, positive, negative, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, regular intervals, right? And so we get this thing uh, as it spins. We build up charges on these guys. They spin, light up the light bulb. We can see that it got brighter and then dimmer and then brighter again when it got down there. The light bulb is going to get bright no matter which side it's at, okay? Now, a Direct current generator is going to look slightly different. We use this thing here that's really essentially a split 
uh, slip ring. And so you notice here on this little ring here, this is called your commutator. Okay, this guy here, um, and it's, it's works slightly different. It's got a split down the middle, so your uh, your brushes can only ever be in contact with one half of your slip ring at a time. And as it turns, okay, as it turns, oh no, I screwed it up. All right, so uh, you notice that here this. The slip rings are only ever in, in touch with uh, that one part of the slip ring. Okay, so keep that in mind as we look at the commutators when it comes, when the animation option comes back up. Hopefully, we're not recording any of the desktop audio because that would suck. All right. Okay, so here's <clears throat> this guy here. Now, notice that the slip ring here, the brushes are only ever in contact with one part and when it goes straight over these gaps is when we hit these zeros. All right, let's see, let's watch it again. It's kind of hard to see because it kind of, it's a little jumpy, but, um, and notice that we still get the same idea. It goes bright, dull, bright, dull, bright, dull on the light bulb, all right. So we use a commutator as a sp is the adjusted slip ring that allows us to create a direct current. Okay. Motors work very, very similarly, but slightly differently. Instead of using mechanical energy to create electrical energy, now we're going backwards and we're using an electrical energy source. Okay. We're using electrical energy. Oh, dang it, I did it again. Using electrical energy, electrical energy, uh, and we're going to convert that into mechanical energy. All right. Uh, our electrical energy into our mechanical energy. And so um, motors are things that are going to be able to do this for us. So we're going to attach some sort of uh, EMF source here, okay? And then this guy is going to con induce a current on this wire, okay? And uh, so now, because we've got a current, these are moving charges. So this is our the direction of our velocity. Okay, um, and these are negative charges, and then our magnetic field is going to the up and to the left, right? This purple line, and we can use our right hand rule again. Uh, it would be like this, right? And remember, our current uh, is defined as the movement of par positive charges. So our thumb is going in the direction of the current, and our fingers are going in the direction of the magnetic field, and so our force is upwards. And so we've got the magnetic force is pushing this upwards. So because we've put a current through this wire, and there's a magnetic field there, it's forcing the armature, this coil of wire, to go straight up and uh, to start spinning around. Okay. Um, now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, because, but if, if we induce a current, if we put a current on this wire, that's going to create its own magnetic field. Won't that mess with the magnetic field that's already existing? And the answer to that is yes, it does. Um, the thing that, uh, the, uh, and what that does is counteract the effect of this magnetic field and kind of reduces its effectness, effectiveness. And so we call this, this reduction effectiveness, the back EMF. And it is the EMF induced in the motor's coil, and it's going to reduce the current in the coil of the motor. So if this, e this EMF that we originally started with, it's going to produce some amount of current, that current, there's going to be some magnetic field that's going to induce a current that goes backwards against that from this magnetic field that's actually going to reduce that EMF. And we call that amount the back EMF. All right. So let's see if we can watch this guy here. All right, so here we've got a motor set up, right? Here's our, uh, you know, it essentially looks like a commutator, right? All right? That's because it is. And we've got our branches, wires, and batteries. All right, let's see what happens. So we put this electrical energy through here, and we can see that our current is going from positive to negative because we're talking about conventional current, right? And so it goes over here through the wire and back around again, and our wires are going to go from north to south, right? And so we can use our right hand rule, okay? to follow the force that's being applied. So if we put our thumb with the velocity and our fingers with the magnetic field, then um, the force, right, will be going downwards, right? That was a little, kind of an awkward way. Or if we do it the other way, that would be a little bit easier to do, you know, <clears throat> then it would go the other way. So anyway, it's gonna be spinning this way. Now notice that when we're vertically, 
right there's going to be absolutely no force acting on it because the the velocity uh, the direction of the current and the magnetic field are not going to be perpendicular or the, the so the force is not going to help it spin so the only time it has forces acting on its spin is uh is when it's horizontally but then when it's completely vertically then that force is no longer going to be pushing it into the direction of the spin all right and so uh notice here they're showing you here where it flashes where the arrows happen and when you're up and down there's no arrows at all right and so that's kind of what's going on here and that's the reason we use that commutator because that commutator is going to stop the current and allows the the motor okay to kind of use momentum to carry it through that spot where no force helps it go around and around okay this stuff is kind of tricky and the best way to do it is just take the time to draw out yourself draw out those uh, those arrows and figure out your right hand rules or whatever rules you want to use to figure out what's going on last little bit here is mutual inductance this stuff this is pretty fascinating uh, mutual inductance is in my opinion um, so the way it works is uh, essentially you know that a, if you create a current in a wire that wire will create its own magnetic field or that current creates its own magnetic field and then you know that a magnetic field can create a current in something else so uh, what you're doing is you're using a current to create to uh, create a magnetic field and then the ma that magnetic field is creating a current all right and we call that mutual inductance all right so essentially you start with one circuit turn it on and it creates a, a current going on in here and we call this the primary coil all right and then uh, this specific setup is using an iron ring because of its magnetic properties it'll help convert that uh, magnetic field over and uh, make that induction just a little bit stronger all right and so uh, we turn it on and then this guy will you know create its own magnetic field transfer through the iron ring and then this guy because the magnetic field is changing through it will be able to create a current all right now the one trick about this is that you really can't just leave if you turn it on and leave it still then uh, the only time you'll get a current over here is right when you turn it on because remember in order to induce a current it has to be a changing magnetic field right there or the and the flux has to change you have to have changing flux okay um, and because if you when you turn this on uh, it's only going to be changing right at the beginning when it goes from nothing to on and so a lot of times these guys you know you though you know very simply they could just go on off on off on off or they could have some some a sort of resistor series that could change its variable uh, very vary its resistance as it works okay and so this is essentially like uh, what how transformers work that step down or step up power uh, as they cut or sorry not power uh, voltage and current as they come into our house um, so on and so forth anyway and we'll talk about that more in our next unit all right and um, so we can use this this formula is pretty dang helpful right here it allows us to use mutual inductance that's the capital M and then current over the change in time so uh, and use that to calculate our voltage so this will be an important formula moving forward uh, that's it for this video this stuff is pretty confusing you have to keep track of a lot of things you have to remember your right hand rules and um, it's uh, it's also hard because we're you know we're thinking about things that are occurring in three dimensions um, but uh, at the same time trying to keep track of them in uh, just like this 2d PowerPoint presentation so don't be afraid to you know write it out yourself act it out uh, no the worst anybody think is just that you're throwing around gang science as you're holding up your hand and like doing all this stuff and you know whatever or they just think you're a goof anyway uh, so do your practice problems and uh, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you on the flip side.